It's time to check the global stories that has made it to the front pages of our national dailies this morning. And joining us to review the papers is Shola Omolayo, is a public affairs analyst. Good morning, sir. Thank you for joining us. Good morning. And good morning. Good morning. Good morning. Good morning. Thank you for joining us. All right, so we begin with the punch this morning, and it talks about, you know, the minors um, that were arrested from the hashtag end bad governance protests. And on the punch, it says we were starved, locked up with criminals, and that's what the minors have said. The writer here says police deny maltreatment as release protesters narrate three-month ordeal behind bars. Um, and, of course, when we saw videos of them uh, in the courts where they were being arraigned, some of them looked really, in fact, most of them looked very malnourished. One was about to pass out, was on the floor. Um, you could tell that they had not been taken care of. And now they're telling us their ordeal, how they've been treated. And these are people who just, maybe they were flying if another flag and it was being seen as treason. But they were still being put in the same, um, you know, the same correctional facility as criminals who have probably done something else, um, something more grievous. Um, these little minors were, were not taken to a juvenile prison. Instead, they were being put with criminals. And um, I want to get your take on this. The fact that this is how they've been treated. They say they were maltreated. Um, most of them, like I said, they were malnourished. They were just... It was, it's quite sad to know that we treat our kids this way. But there's another story on, um, you know, on another paper that says, um, you know, do not, do not, you know, do not go for minors. Yes, that was what yeah, the, the that's paper That's uh, from the Emir. Yes, from the saying, Emir, yeah. who says, um, go after real culprits, not minors. Not the minors. So I want to get your take on this. Also, the um, governor said he did not know that you know this these people were even being arrested and he only found out when they were arraigned in court so a lot of people now are speaking about i want to get your take on this whole saga well it's unfortunate that we find ourselves in this uh drum drum in this part of the continent of africa we've loved this issue of um, minor the children all this one whatever has been said now doesn't hold water. And so the funny part of it is that some of our officials, the way they talk, baffles me. At times, I just think that some of them should, should just learn to be quiet at times and just let go of so many things. Because we already know the kind of people we have in government. And it's not about minors. It's about the Nigerian people. How do you treat people is the question. Because the, trait, the way you treat the, the fathers and the mothers of these children is the same way you treat them. And um, uh, you hear the, the um, I don't know, we have started to defend the, the position of the children based on the events that are happening then, and we spoke about it to allow them to be free and um, think of way to um, cushion the purpose of why they came out shouting, even some of them don't really know what they are doing. And it's obvious, some of them don't even understand the language, English, not to talk of telling, saying the thing of treason is being placed on them. And the enemy are also saying that um, they should chase after what? What are we saying? Is that a tag at the time of the, 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 the stoppage of violence in which they are putting up? I saw in some of this video that is flying around, seeing the kind of weapons these people are carrying, you know. And when we are in a stage of um, crisis that I call war, anything could go for it. So I think someone, I believe, uh, I don't know, I think one of the Emir that um, must be the one that is talking was once a military person. Uh, Emir Sanusi. Sanusi is the one who is talking. Once yeah. a CBN yeah. governor. Yeah. Ah, uh, so, uh, okay, okay, the CBN run, okay, sorry about that, in person of Sanusi, he knows too well about all these things. It's not until when we beginning to defend our regional part of the world, you know, the regional side thinking about tribe, thinking about religion, I think we will continue to act in this manner. If you see the ammunition some of these guys are having, you, you'll be shocked. Remember, 19, is it 1990, in the 90s there? 
during Liberia war. Some of the people that were carrying arms that died a lot, and some of these young guys who are under the age of between 10 and 12. So you can't tell. But we are depending on the cause of a big power under the land. And some people are being trapped. And that is why I think a lot of people came out to, to, to find a way in talking about these young ones that, was, that were arrested at that time. Come to think of it, I believe our, our government should go deep and think of Nigerians. The prison place is not a place you even want to. They call it a correctional center. What is correct about the center? You see elderly people, you go in there, even not because of some evangelical uh, religious, either you call them Muslim or Christian, who go in there, and some philanthropists who go to our prison. You, 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 you marvel that we have this kind of a camp in our country that is called the giant of Africa. I don't think it's anything to flow. The thing we know already. It's a concentration camp uh, as it is, because uh, if you, you have ever had an encounter, you would know that these places are not places that can correct anybody. Mm -hmm. they, they make you more hardened than when mm -hmm. you go into there. Because, and even the worst part is that some of these people are there awaiting trial. Mm -hmm. It's not that they, some of them don't even some know why they're there. are probably even innocent. They, yeah, a lot of them are, oh, because we are criminals. awaiting um, awaiting trial and sometimes you take 10 years you are there awaiting trial for over something that some of them don't even know what they did some were coming back from maybe the, a, a job somewhere mm -hmm. maybe at 10 o'clock or at 12 o'clock and they were just taken and saying and they said that you you are you are a criminal and that's all thrown there and nobody remembers them and now they're forced to mingle with the criminals so yeah it even makes you hardened so you you think about how your country has failed you and you just go ahead but a worrisome thing, sir, a worrisome thing, sir, is that even when the president has said that these minors should be released, especially uh, the ones that are in Abuja, they still have uh, some of uh, some of these minors in Borno State uh, because they said that they they talked down on the governor, they did X Y Z. The the minors are still there, and that is very 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 worrisome now. So is this pre president's pronouncement? Only for minors that were discovered in Abuja. What about the ones that may be in Borno or any other state of Nigeria? Will it not? Will this amnesty, as it is, cover them? The word of our president and his title says is the chief, the commander in chief. Yes. What means the president has said in this country, the command code has not been activated in any of his work, in most of his work. If you, if you read so deep in the papers this month too, you will find out that the president gives to our copper the same leverage of um, payments that ought to be given to them. To date, with those who passed out last, this month, October, Last month, this, uh, I mean, those who passed out in October, they were never part of the share. They never received it. Go ask them. So I asked myself, what is the command word that is in the president? Not to talk of a governor. Not to talk of, sorry to use this word, the force that is commanding on our discourse and genkos. What is commanding? What is not commanding about the PFS that even the president command in his influence? What is so commanding about the commander in chief at this point in time? That's why a governor can wake up and tell you that he didn't even know that some young ones were arrested in the state. Yeah. Can you imagine? Mm -hmm. I don't know. That's what we were saying here. We, you are the commander, you are the chief security officer. So it's either they didn't tell you, which is wrong, or they told you and you didn't take up that responsibility and do the needful. Mm. Okay, so, uh, yeah. So, um, still on the punch, let's take this one that says consumers protest as discos hike meter price by 28%. So, obviously, um, this whole thing started from fuel subsidies gone and then there was the electricity tariff that was being increased for band a customers 
and now even the, in the electricity sector because it's still power um you probably don't see the lights as much you don't get the electricity as much as you want you have to find an alternative source of power which is buying fuel but then even if you're saying okay i really want to get a new meter the meter price has been increased by 28 percent and now consumers are protesting because it just seemed like a lot you know we're being bamboozled with so many things all at the same time what do you think of the fact that the discos are already hiking the meter price by 28 percent even when the federal government said that uh, they should make sure that uh, the the change of the meters for instance mm -hmm. is at no cost to the consumers yeah. because they know what it is but now they are hiking it and nobody is saying anything maybe it comes back to the commander who is not commanding <laughs> I, I just told you this. Don't at times don't let us put all of these things. Don't let us don't let these guys push us against the president too. This issue is not about the discos and the jackals alone. It started from the PHCM as well. Immediately we move away from NEPA. The people who were opportune to manage the source of power begin to take advantage of the laxity of governance in this country. Under this disco and jenko and whatever they call them, when Fashola was the minister, he made a pronouncement many times, many times, to a point that if, they, if you don't have meters in your house, then this guy don't have right to come and cut your lights. Mm -hmm. Because we don't have laws that we that is there is no law guiding the the average man in Nigeria. There's no law. But when you see a crisis where or when these people are accosted or are harassed, you arrest them and you say you are taking them to, to, to court. We enjoy this, we enjoy corporate way of life to ourselves that appeasing the conscience. Of the people of Nigeria. When Spajola left, the same thing continued. It became worse. They told you when you get to the, the, the World Bank A was a trickish act on the people of Nigeria. The Bank A system of syndrome, they use it against the government and they manipulate the government to get at the people. The same Bank A is strictly for some for the people of the rich who can pay this amount of money. The capitalist code is so manipulative to even kill Nigerians as a people. What are we saying? How? What is it? The data? What is uh, you can't even place? What is the increase about? Very soon, they will tell you because of the level of gas and they could not get the amount of gas they are using to, 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 to give you life. But a system will collapse and they will increase the, 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 the bill in their own interest. Nobody is working for Nigeria or fighting or, 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 or monitoring this, this, this capitalist. Today, they will tell you there is a collapse, no apology. And even if there is, there is nothing to show for, 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 for their pain. Well, the, the, the father is a director, and either the son or the daughter is the one watching the computer, checking what is coming in. Go and ask the marketers of all of these agencies and see what they are going through. Call it Jen Conway, if they electric or Eco electric. They are, their marketers are being for show, like, like uh, bank, uh, bank marketers, to make sure. In fact, they, uh, they enjoy it when you don't have meter. Mm -hmm. We don't have, there is no law. That's why one person can even have the mind to say he wants to go to court for point not to be, only for not to be coming in when just is expensive. What kind of world are we living in? We are, just, we are still using this colonial law. The, the Nigerian law is not in place. The colonial laws that protect the whites is what we still have in place. That's why one person can, you will be so shocked in the next couple of months, but maybe by February next year, they'll be selling three first meter for 300 naira. I mean, for 300,000 naira, if not 350. Why are we like this? That is why you will find in a country they are trying to clear up this uh, gas 
say CNG now, the GNC or whatever they say you want to be installed in your car. Some countries are going out of it because of the damage cost, whereas we are jumping into it newly. So it's not about unboxing this girl or no source with this girl. We've been like this for years. We have not had a, a that leader that had the strong mind to say, let what you want to be, be. Mm. And chase those who are depending because of this nation away. All right. Okay, well, I'm them. <laughs> okay um, there is this issue about tax reform. Let's move to the Daily Trust newspaper now. Uh, tax reform president should unite, not divide Nigeria. That's according to Bauchi governor. We also have a story where uh, one of the National Assembly members, Ndume, is saying that the tax reform bill is dead on arrival. We know also how the northern elite have been fighting this tax reform bill and saying that it's not in their favor and all that. And the presidency, on the other hand, saying whatever they want to say, they can say there is no going back on the tax reform. So we'd like to get your take on that. Bauchi State Governor is saying that it will bring more division than unity. Hmm. You know, when people are lazy, they always want to eat from your hands and they care less the pain of the strike. That's who some of these leaders are. Well, I, 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 uh, Senator Dume will never disappoint me. He will never disappoint me. Most of them speak from the area of political interest and the area of tribalism, regional. Look, your state says that they cannot sell beer in your, in your they can't sell beer in your state. Ogobon cannot come to your to your doorstep. You know what I mean by Ogobon? Everything that shark that can mm -hmm. make you happy is the Ogobon that I know. Mm -hmm. Today, Ogobon cannot be given to people in your state. And whoever is bringing Ogobon of 40 million, you send your tax force to go and destroy this Ogobon. But the Ogogo we are drinking in the south in all our clubhouses, we are taking from the share. And your religion, your religious law is never against the sharing of my crime, my sin, that is taking me to your own hell. If your own judgment will come. All right? Eh? Yeah. A wise man that died at the back of and a wise man that died at the back of a foolish man, he get a bill. I pray if the president can stand up to this, I just pray. If the president can stand up to this, even if the people you are sending to your house of assembly, either the red chamber or the green chamber, there are some mutes now, especially the ones from the south. Especially the ones from the south. But if it's about sharing of Bugatti, mm -hmm. Lamborghini, they will stand up to Rito. It's about, if it's about sharing phone, money, constituency allowance, they will stand up to it. But for this, they've been so mute because some of these southern leaders, some of them, some of them are so cowards. Some of them, some of them are so coward. There is never a time you want to come against it. You want to bring up an order into this nation that will affect, that is going to involve the northern part of this country. Senator Tume will, will, will be one of the people that will the press for it. Hmm. You won't find anybody from Mosul. You will not. The only place you will find us is in you, you, you. We are good at that. Hmm. I wonder what you know, you know, <laughs> you know means. But um, so I want to take this other one um, still on the, the Daily Trust. And it's the main headline here. It says bandits abduct over 50 people in Zamfara. The writers here says the place 150 million Naira levy on residents killed 10 farmers in Niger. And there's another one that says we're working hard to tackle the problem. So obviously this has been a problem for a couple of years now, whereby um, bandits are moving into villages, abducting people for the farmers. They cannot even go to their farms. And of course it has a ripple effect when it comes to our food um, security in Nigeria. But what do you think the um, security 
agencies need to be doing more because it seems like they are not up on the game, whereby they are ensuring that Nigerians are safe. And that is their primary responsibility. Um, our security should be, should be crucial to them. But here, we're seeing time and time again where, where people are being abducted in their own homes. So a 150 million naira levy on residents is quite ridiculous. Because why do I have to pay so much just because I want to stay alive when the people who are supposed to protect me are not doing their jobs? How do you think we need to go about this to ensure that Nigeria is, is a secured country, a secured nation? No matter what we think, it's not right now. We should continue to celebrate our security agents, our force, our soldiers, the, the army, the Air Force and the Navy, they are doing a very great job. You see, when you enter, when a crisis starts to grow, you might not know the length of it in time. But when it gets to this point, this point that we find ourselves, you will also look at the terrain. You know, the, the northern part of this country has always been attacked, has come under this kind of attack. They, they operate like the gorilla fighters when you don't even know their immediate target, they just come in and swing out. And understanding that the northern part of this country, their, their, their land, the, the landscape is, is so wide and um, their road path can be very, from those who know much about the place, can be very funny. And uh, our workforce and, and our security force, they, 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 they are so numbered. They are not as large as you think that we are having now. You want to say we employed, okay? Employing them is not an issue. But how do we raise funds? Let me ask you, what is the defense budget? You know, what is the defense budget that we have? I tell people, I said Nigerian budget has never been a realistic budget to put to, to solve problems like this. Our, our traditional rulers too have a very big role to play. And this thing does start today. Don't forget. Remember, this thing, people think that we enter into this crisis and it is about, and it's also is about land trouble, that uh, land struggle. You know, we have some of it in this southern part too. It's just that we are not seeing it in that way. It's everywhere, you get? Now, in the northern part, I pray that the traditional rulers should wake up and do a lot help the government in putting sanity in some of this area. Else, we are going to face a lot of hunger in, in the year 2025. Hmm. It, it, it is not about security alone. And I don't know. We should work well because the only area we can do well again is through farming. Farming is another major area where we can build up finance. And we need everybody to talk about it and to help the government in educating them on what to do. That even we to traditional leaders, why also they send signals or information to our government and the information they, they were be releasing to um, our security agents should be secret, secret enough so that we can have enough information to curtail some of these vices. Because it has been there since in the 90s, during, I mean the 80s and 90s, during the Matasene riot. This guy has spread. And you know, Nigeria is a place that, uh, that above a lot of network states that uh, uh, the border is so wide. You can, you can, would you say, is it from Cameroon, Chad, and, uh, uh, and oh, Chad, right, Niger, down the line? It's a wide, it's a wide space. Yeah. And I, I say, as a very bad try. Yeah, I mean, I was just listening to you talking about farming and, you know, ensuring that we invest even more in that. And But in my own head, I'm like, the farmers cannot even go to their farms because, of course, there are bandits there waiting for them. But I think at the end of the day, if we even have employment for a lot of people, some of these people, I'm, not, I'm, not, I'm obviously not going to, um, you know, say it's okay for you to be a terrorist or for you to be a bandit. But some of them are just being thrown into these things because they're trying to put food on their tables. So it's important that if we have, you know, employment for everyone, Definitely, some of them would not, you know, would not be driven into certain, um, you know, things that they do right now. But anyways, that's so very funny today. This is where we have to wrap it up right now. Thank you so much for coming. It's always a pleasure having you on our program. Thank you, Shola. Thank you so much for having me. All right. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you.
Well, we're speaking with Shola Omolaya, he's a public affairs analyst, and we've just been taking the global stories that made it to the front pages of our national dailies. We'll go on a short break now. When we return, we'll be talking about the American election, the results, and the analysis. Please stay with us. <laughs> 